Hey everyone, this is Dr. Brian Capra from Genesis Chiropractic Software. Um, this video is going to be Dr. Jason Haas showing you how to create the first note for a patient in the CVP suite inside Genesis Chiropractic Software. I'll go ahead and after that show you how to manage notes for subsequent visits after that. But before I do any of that, I want to thank the CVP family, Dr. Deed and Charlene, uh, for choosing Genesis as the certified software for CVP. Uh, the entire CVP family and all the coaches, uh, definitely Dr. Jason and Dr. Sandy and Sandy who really spearheaded the project. We've been spending about two years um, building the CVP suite to be, to be a product with inside of Genesis that can be, was tweaked and customized just for CVP doctors. Uh, recently, we visited the, C, the, the benchmark office out in Colorado. We took over eight hours of footage and um, now we're going to chop that down into small bite-sized videos so you guys can start to really see what we've been working on for the past couple of years. Um, so again, that time at, out in Colorado, I want to thank especially Dr. Jason, Dr. Sandy, and their team out there. That Their time is extremely valuable, um, and they're so dedicated to, to CUP and the mission that they were willing to take that time, set it aside so you guys can see what they've been working on for so long. Um, I want to also thank... Uh, the Genesis team, everybody. It's been years, so um, it's it's the operations team, it's the, the support team, it's the the billing team, it's the marketing team. Obviously, everybody from the from the bottom to the top, um, all over the place, really put a ton of energy into creating the CP suite for you guys. So today is just the start of that, and uh, we're going to go into the note and, and let Dr. Jason go over some of that stuff. So I just want to, before we go into this, quickly give you perspective on this, how important, how much work went into this to give you all the tools to make, to document the CVP visit, but also make it extremely fast and uh, efficient for you to do so. I want to give you perspective, meaning that if, even if your note were to take an extra 30 seconds per visit, if, if your average practice sees 200 visits per week, I did some math here, turns out that over a 20 year career even, seeing 200 visits a week, an additional 30 seconds per note adds up to a waste of 72 days out of your life. So almost two and a half months completely gone wasted just by taking an additional 30 seconds to document your visits. And the other thing with that is if it takes you an additional 30 seconds to document your visits, the the odds on you not completing all your notes by the end of the day actually goes up drastically. So if your notes are not done or able to be done in real time and you have notes done have to be completed by the end of the day, what usually happens is you don't get to them or at some point you don't get to them and then you have a stack that continually builds and so your notes are not an accurate representation of what's actually happening with the patient. And so you leave yourself wide open for a, a compliance risk or if, God forbid, you had a post-payment audit, leaving yourself open to having to pay the money that you do collect back from insurance companies back. And even if it's a cash practice that you have and you want to just document CVP, it's important that you can do that in a fast and accurate and efficient manner. Again, just for that 72 hours, what would you do with an additional, uh, sorry, 72 days, what would you do in an additional 72 days in your life? There's just, just endless things. If you wanted to focus that energy and time on training your team or doing more marketing or just taking that time to yourself and going fishing, whatever it might be, um, that time is valuable. It's yours, and, it, and we have to make sure that we can do the best job possible, fast and accurate, to do the best for the patient, but also do what's right for us at the same time. So Dr. Haas, Jason is going to go over the first note. Now, this is going to be with all the expl explanations and everything, it's going to take him about six minutes to get to the first time you set up a patient's note. But I want you to remember, that's the first time you set up the patient's note ever. Subsequent visits, you're going to see, I'm going to go over that after the fact. That's going to only take you, you know, maybe 30 seconds at the most per visit total. Not an additional 30 seconds or an additional minute, but a total 30 seconds with your billing included and finished. So your, your note and your billing is done. So I'm going to let Dr. Jason go over the first part. And again, doc, thank you, Dr. Jason, for doing that. And um, I'll see you on the other side, and I'll show you how to do visits and notes after that first note is completed. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna go through kind of what a typical initial patient uh, note would look like from the first visit. This is the patient information screen. This is the screen that our front desk receptionist will fill out as much as the information that they can get. We've done the initial examination and now I'm going to create that initial note. So what, I, what I'll do is I'll go to more here and then I'll go to travel card. And the travel card is essentially the SOAP note that allows us to access not only their subjective, objective, assessment and plan information, but it also has all the functionality for me to get back into their account, to get back into any MRI reports or anything else that has been um, brought in by the patient or something that we might have referred. So let's say the patient comes in and, and they have pain, okay? That pain, they're gonna rate that as dull, aching, and deep. They feel that pain in their cervical spine, specifically at the base of the skull and at the base of the neck. That pain radiates up into the left frontal and the right occipital. They feel that pain frequently. They rate that pain as an eight out of 10. Their goals are to get that to a two out of 10. And then uh, we can go down the list. So what we've got now is when we click down here, we're starting to develop our subjective, objective assessment and plan. So with the objective, a typical thing that we would do in the office is we would do an initial consultation and exam. We're going to do their in-body, body composition analysis. We're going to do their posture screen, initial assessment. We're also going to do some new patient x-rays, standard x-rays on that. We're gonna look at their musculature. I'm gonna palpate their cervical spine, uh, maybe their SCMs. The result of that made their pain go up to an eight. Let's say we also looked into their lower trapezius and their thoracic paraspinals. And when we did that, all we really found was maybe some hypertonicity. They didn't call it pain. Their activities of daily living, here we have a lot of different functionality. Number one, we can say that um, ADLs are worsened with head movement. Okay, you can type that in or you can use what's already in the boxes. So let's say when they're doing computer work for longer than 30 minutes, then they're gonna get very severe pain and they consider that 25% of their function. Their short-term goal is to get that to 50% and they wanna do that within a month. That's an accurate assessment. Maybe their long-term goal is to have 100% of that function so that they don't have the pain. And we're gonna say that long-term uh, time frame will go at 10 weeks. Their assessment for the day, we've got a lot of different options here. So they haven't been through treatment, so we're not necessarily going to talk about their treatment response. We can get to that after, the, after we initiate care. But we can look at some of the complicating factors. Let's say they've got excess weight, a previous injury that they took a long time to seek treatment for, they've got some degeneration in there, maybe their computer time at work makes it difficult for them, and they've had a previous fall. Okay, so we've got a bunch of different complications. Their goals are we're going to increase their mobility, reduce their pain, increase range of motion. The prognosis in this situation for improvement we're going to say is good. Complete resolution, we probably don't know enough about this patient yet to say, you know, that their complete resolution is uh, excellent. So let's say that we're kind of guarded right now. We don't know how they're going to respond. Close that out, and then we move on to the plan. So here we can set it up for what we're not only expecting to do on the next visit, which is the report of findings on the next visit, but also we can kind of see what we want to do in, in terms of their therapy. So let's say we want to do some traction. So we've got mechanical traction, 97012, and we're going to do that on their cervical spine. The equipment that we're going to use based upon our x-rays, let's say they're going to do Pope two-way traction with no cervical angle. And we're going to do that uh, starting at five minutes. We're going to do that two times a week and we'll follow up with them on a, a re-evaluation at six weeks. Maybe that's all that can fit in their schedule. 
Their goals are to increase their mobility, reduce their pain, and increase their range of motion. And did we perform that? No, we didn't perform that. We expect to do that next time. All right, let's say we also, we're gonna adjust them. Of course, we're chiropractors. So the action we're gonna do, say a 98941, we're gonna pick the locations here in the cervical spine. We'll do occiput, C1, C2, maybe we'll adjust C6, C7, upper thoracic, T1, T2, and then maybe down in their lower back, we might do an, an, an L5 adjustment, okay? The equipment that we're gonna use, call it wherever you want. We've got diversified in here. We've got a different things. Maybe you're just gonna do some general spinal manipulative therapy, who knows what. And then those goals are increased mobility, reduced pain. And did we perform that? Not performed, all right? Now, we've pretty much got a note. If we look down here at the bottom, we've got subjective information, we've got objective information, we've got their activities of daily living covered, and we've got an assessment with a nice plan, some short-term goals, some long-term goals, and then we're good to go. But this note has actually not been generated yet. And we can go back to the diagnosis account over here, and we've got account diagnosis. We're gonna plug all of those in. We're gonna go to procedures, and what did we do today? We did a standard examination with x-rays. We're gonna link up these diagnoses from that. They're not a Medicare patient, not that we're aware of. We don't need to put any modifiers in there. Go back to the EMR, make sure that we've got everything on that note, and then boom, when we hit sign off and submit, that note actually gets billed out and we have completed the initial note for the patient. Okay, so Dr. Jason went over what has to happen to set up your first note. I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to do subsequent visits after that. I'm gonna, I wanna show you a little bit more about what's gonna be available on that travel card screen. Uh, patients have the availability in your office to have a key tag. They could walk up to your table, scan it, it'll bring up this entire screen for you before you even walk into the room. Uh, that will go over all that stuff in a, in a subsequent video. But just some other things that are going to be available at your fingertips. Um, your posture images. Uh, so if you have multiple posture images, if you do a posture uh, screen, you use the iPad app. One, put you do your screening, you hit a button in your iPad, and that will automatically upload the images of the screening and the PDF of the report. And the same thing goes for your x-rays. Again, this is touch screen. I'm using a, a mouse right now and clicking, but this could be touch screen if you wanted to. Um, and that can also bring up your x-rays. Same thing with posture ray. If you do your analysis in your posture ray, one click of a button, and that'll upload all the images with the lines actually drawn on them. There's no lines on these. But it, bring in the images with the lines drawn on them and actually the PDF of both the posture ray and the posture screen. So simple one-click integrations with those two uh, uh, pieces of technology there. So again, just making it much easier for you. I just want to make sure you saw that. That's available at the screen too. Uh, all this other stuff here, I'm going to go over on other visits, uh, other videos, I'm sorry. Uh, the care plan information on the top right I'll go over in other videos. This over here, these are like sticky notes. These do not go into your daily note, but it's good to have just to remind you that maybe the patient only wants instrument adjusting only. You know, Maybe you want to remember where they work so you can get in there and, and do a talk or a screening. Uh, that's over here. But here's what Dr. Jason did last time. He did the extra, um, I'm sorry, the diagnosis codes and he talked about the procedure codes. So after that first visit, now the patient comes in again. Now this note is saved for you. So you don't have to regenerate or re-engineer the entire note all over again. So let's pretend the patient comes in, they're at the table, you do your, you, um, you analyze their posture, they lay down on the table, you look at their x-rays, you look at their note, and the narrative shorthand would be right here. Uh, you look at their note, and you remember what they had from their previous visit. So what's the beauty of this is you don't have to go look for the previous note. It's the it's what's actually on the screen right now. So the other nice thing about this is in other systems, you typically have to go read the narrative and then 
interpret the narrative and then have to regenerate. If you wanted to change any one component of the patients, let's say one of their complaints like this, you'd have to re-engineer that entire complaint if you wanted to change just one thing like the pain level, for example. What's nice here is we have it in shorthand pulled forward from the previous visit automatically and you could see the components of the problem. If you want to change any one component, let's say this pain is no longer an 8, but now it's a 6. I've shown improvement in this patient with just a couple of clicks. Um, or the frequency. Maybe it's not frequent anymore, maybe it's now it's intermittent. That changed it and that also updates the narrative. Okay, so if, you, if I click on it, you'll see the narrative actually change. All right, so again, patient walks in, you do your posture analysis, you lay them down on, on the table, you do your adjustment, maybe you look at the x-rays and things, you check their posture again, you go in, you make any changes to the subjective, uh, objective, the ADLs, you know, again, you could you can simply change this to now they're, it's, you know, they're at 35%, uh, let's say, uh, their assessment, and you look at their plan. Now this is the visit right after their first visit. So today you're not going to do, um, you're going to do your ROF, but you're actually going to perform the adjustment and perform the traction. Okay, so that's it. You're done. Your, your entire note is done. It, it literally takes to do those changes on your note maybe five or ten seconds. Okay, now when you're done with your patient, all you have to do is hit the submit and sign off button That'll generate this claim with the diagnosis codes and the procedure codes. That'll submit the claim to the insurance company, and that'll save your note and sign it off with your name and digital signature. So again, we're talking 10, 15 seconds to do a, a really good update, make material changes, and show improvement in a patient without having to re-engineer your entire note or read a narrative at all. Okay, so that's pretty much it. 5, 10, 15 seconds to do it entire note every single visit after that first one and you're off and running. I want to ask you real quickly if you're watching this video and if we've posted this in the CVP group in Facebook please comment in below. Ask for things that you you have questions about if you think that we need to add something to the video. Uh, I don't expect that we answered everybody's all of everybody's questions in this video. Uh, we want to start the dialogue so we can really start to show you guys what we've been working so hard on over the past couple of years. So uh, thank you again to everybody and I look forward to being able to produce future videos and really start a dialogue with you guys and help you understand uh, again what we're, we're doing for you. Okay, thanks.